I had a thought the Lord visited me on Thursday morning. Spoke to me in a great way uh, about something I've read over a whole lot. Uh, and But I've always read through it. And it's the mystery of Christ. And, I, and tonight, I want to bring out to us a thought of the mystery of Christ and what that is. And, and, and we all in this room may know that. But, but I want us to understand the gravity, to understand the importance of the mystery of Christ in our life. And that is with the thought of are we concealing or are we revealing the Christ? And beginning in Colossians chapter 1, verses 25 through 27. And it says, Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you to fulfill the Word of God, even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to His saints." Uh, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And, that, and that's what the thought I was wanting to share tonight, which is Christ in you. And, and, that, and that's the mystery. you know. And, and the purpose that God has put on our lives and the, and the purpose of everyone in this room tonight that uh, has experienced salvation and the purpose of one that has been baptized in the Holy Ghost or even the ones that don't even know who the Lord Jesus Christ is, God has destined you and I to be something tonight. And, and, and when the purpose of God in our lives is to reveal the mystery of Christ in you, which is the hope of glory. And that is Christ in us, through us, and living the life through and to people by the Holy Ghost in our lives. And tonight I want us to examine ourselves, you know, to realize, you know, the gift that has been given to us. And, you know, when God looked down at us, you know, and says that I love you enough that I'm going to send my only begotten Son, and, you know, that you can have rights to eternal life, and that you can have this life and have it more abundantly. And I'm going to give you all the riches that I have according to the riches and glory, you know, and that's what He he has given to you and I tonight. You know, it begins to reveal the mystery of Christ, the mystery of Christ. See, and if you notice in Paul's writing here, it was hid from, from ages and it was hid from generation to generation. You know, the and, 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 and you know when with this thought of this, you know, in my life, you know, do I reveal the Christ or do I conceal the Christ? You know, he, he has birthed us of His Spirit. You know, that's being born again. Then we went on into the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's the second subsequent feeling. You know, that God has given you and I, but with all that He has given us, do we reveal the Christ or we do conceal the Christ? You know, and I was encouraged to hear Pastor Eric's thought. You know, I think we're right in tune. He began to speak up about the word of witness. You know, and, and that's just what must be what the Lord wants to deal with tonight. Just a little bit. Do I reveal this? You know, and what are we full with? You know, what, what what do I give to people? You know, what does people see from me? You know, the things that I fill this life with, the things that you fill your life with, will be the predominant feature that comes out of you and I. And that's just whatever life you and I feed is the life that, that's going to grow. You know, whether it be the flesh or whether it be the spirit. You know, and the Lord Jesus Christ told us, you know, from out of the abundance of the heart, you know, the mouth speaketh. So the, this great weight that's been put upon the saints of God, the, the weight and the the gift of God of salvation that was so freely given to us has been given to us, but it demands our life in return that you and I reveal the Christ. That is the mystery you know, uh, that, that has been hid from generations to generations, but through Jesus Christ, the Son of God, has been outpoured to be revealed through you and I. But with this, you know, there's a knowledge that comes that you and I must acknowledge, you know, what, what God has given us. There, in, in, in 2 Colossians, or Colossians chapter 2, verse 2, it says, "...that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding." And notice what this says, "...to the acknowledgment of the mystery of God." and the Father and of Christ in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. You know, to the acknowledgement of the mystery. You know, do I acknowledge you know, Christ in me which is the hope of glory? And see, and, and as the church, you know, you and I, there comes a time that you and I, we can talk about what we have, we can talk and say that I have, you know, but there comes a time that you and I truly have to acknowledge 
If I'm born again, that that same uh, Spirit that looked upon the face of the earth and saw that it was void and without form is the same Spirit that dwells in you and I tonight. You know, do I acknowledge that? You know, and do, and do I truly believe that? You know, it's so easy to say, you know, I'm saved, I'm this, you know, I, you know, the Lord has done this, but do I really know my purpose in saying that? And, and with all this underlining and everything we, that we're saying, that is that this glory of the mystery may be revealed, you know, among the Gentiles, that's among you and I, you know, that is Christ in you. So so may we acknowledge, you know, acknowledge this. Let's let's realize saying, Lord has just not given me this life to conceal this life. You know, He has given me this life to reveal the Christ. And that is the mystery that you and I are here, are here for. You and I are here to unfold things, to unlock things, to let this world know, you know, that, that what they never did really know in the Old Testament, that you and I are here today to let everyone know that there is a Christ and that He is on the right hand of the Father glorified. You know, He's making intercession for His saints right now. But you know, He's he's up there for you and I, but you and I are down here representing Him, you know, just as He is in this earth. That's what God has intended, you know, through you and I, for you and I to do that, to represent Christ. And do I understand that? See, Paul told Timothy in the, uh, 1 Timothy 4 and 14 when he says, you know, neglect not the gift that is in thee. He began to talk to him about the gift. You know, and that gift that was in Timothy, what Paul was talking about was the Holy Ghost. He said, you know, don't neglect this thing. See, God has wonderfully saves people, you know, and, and, and He just, just fills us with His Spirit, you know, and we we're just feel the joy of the Lord and the blessings of God in our life and everything that you and I are just feeling and, and, and just enjoy that. But still, sometimes, however it happens, you know, we just come to a place where we stop serving God. You know, we, we feel God, we know that God loves us, then, but there's comes through a process of time, we just quit serving the Lord. And you see, and what happens is if I do that, you know, I begin to hide the Christ. You know, you and I are here to reveal something, but you know, I, but if I turn this life inwardly, I begin to conceal something in my life, and that is to conceal the mystery that you and I are to reveal. You know, and that is Christ. You know, and, and, and all throughout the Old Testament, see those people in the Old Testament embraced this promise. They embraced it, they embraced it, they knew something was out there, but they never did really know what this promise was. They, they just knew something was there, but they didn't really understand it. We began to uh, look back a little bit uh, about the, this mystery from Romans 16, verse 25. And this is a, this is a deep thought. I really understand that. Uh, I don't really uh, I understand that. I'm saying a lot, and I know that uh, we could probably talk about this for months. Uh, this would be a, a a broad Sunday school topic, I guess, could be. But you know, with that, I just want us to understand with everything I'm saying. Are you and I revealing this mystery, or are you and I concealing the mystery? Let's always keep that thought in our mind throughout this study. In Romans 16, verse 25, it says, "Now to him that is of power to establish." you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. You know, in the verse, you know, the verses after that, you know, the prophets would prophesy, they would talk about it. You know, but everything that they would talk about and everything they would prophesy to, they never just did really understand everything they were saying. You know, God was speaking through them. God was talking to them. You know, but still in the Old Testament times, you know, the, 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 the Bible tells you and I that what you and I have, the angels desire to look into. And begin, then we look what Hebrews chapter 11 says. You know, this is the book of faith. You know, this is all the stories we hear of faith. But we get back to verse 39 and verse 40. And and also, uh, verse 13 I'll read, and it says, And these all, having obtained a good report, through faith, receive not the promise, God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be perfect. And then Hebrews 13 and 13, 11 and 13. And these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on this earth. See, that there was a new dispensation coming that they, they, were, they was embracing this promise. You know, and that's what kept Abraham walking. You know, when he began to look, you know, the Bible says, you know, he was, he was walking, he was looking, but yet the revelation, Abraham knew that he was a, a pilgrim. He knew he was a stranger in his life. And that's why the Bible said he was looking for 
a better country. He was looking for one that had cities, who's the builder, and, you know, and, and the foundations, and the builder, and the maker was God. You see, it kept him walking. It kept him moving. See, they was embracing this promise. They was embracing this mystery, but they didn't really know what they was getting a hold of. They were just kind of looking on the outside, just, just kind of grabbing, just little hints, little hints there. God just kind of talking to them. A little by little by little, but you and I tonight, this has been revealed in you and I, and I want us to understand the importance of that. You know, if you've been born again, we have something that, you know, that they just just kind of, if you understand what I'm saying, that dispensation of the Holy Ghost wasn't even given, you know, in the Old Testament. And then you and I in this room tonight that's been born again, you were birthed to this life, you know, then we go on to the baptism of that, and what, what God has given you and I, you know, is just something that the angels, even the angels desire to look into. And in this whole book, this whole Bible here is about Christ, and still we're building this baseline you know about about the, the things that have been hidden. You know, so we're going to turn to Hebrews uh, chapter nine. We're going to read verses seven through verse eleven. It says, "And but into the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the heirs of the people." The Holy Ghost is signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, which uh, while as the first tabernacle was yet standing which was a figure for uh, the, uh, the time then passed in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not uh, make Him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. That's just saying there was always remembrance of sin. But verse 10 says, "...which stood only in meats and drinks and in divers washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation." But here we are. But Christ being come a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. And see, now that is you and I today. You know, where are the temple now? You know, right now, the, 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 the back then, you know, the priest went in this only this one time a year. He would go in there and he wouldn't go without blood. He was taking something in there. And all that was saying is, just like the Bible says, you know, the Holy Ghost, that was signifying that the holiest of holies was not, you know, our way was not made manifest yet. You know, God still had something in mind. You know, they, they knew they was doing something. They knew they was doing what God told them to do. But yet that was signifying that the way had not been totally made. Yet. They were they was just doing what was imposed upon them, if you notice the verbiage of verse 10. But see, now you and I are the temple, now of the Holy Ghost. And see, that, are, that you and I are to be the vessel. You know, that's the habitation of God. You know, that is what you and I are to be, this temple of the Holy Ghost. Because 1 Corinthians 3 and 16, it says, Know ye not that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. See, what, what, what the Old Testament type was in that tabernacle. You know, in that temple... That's what you and I are today. And, and I want us to understand that, you know, with this mystery that Christ, you know, to be revealed in us, you know, that is this hope of glory. You know, what are you and I revealing tonight? You know, I don't want to be one that conceals the very life of God. He has placed this life in me. You know, and He's given us of everything that the Lord has given you and I tonight. You know, I want us to understand our importance. I want us to feel encouraged, you know, that, hey, I'm here to reveal a mystery. You know, the Lord has saved me. You know, I'm born again. I'm created now in righteousness and true holiness. I have this life. You know, the devil may try to beat me down. He may tell me I don't have nothing. You know, we, we know that the Bible says he's, he's walking about as a lion, you know, or, you know, roaring lion, seeking, you know, to whom he may devour. The Bible didn't say he was. Was a lion. He just as one. You know, he 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 puts on a pretty good front. But the Bible tells you now that what's greater in me than what's greater in this world. You know, then we turn back to Genesis. You know, the Bible says I'm going to put enmity between thee and the woman. You know, the only place that puts the devil is under my feet, because the Bible promised me that my heel is going to bruise his head. You know, so let's just put the devil where he's at. He's a worthy adversary. He fights us. He beat. Uh, he tries to wear us out. He tries to toil on us. He always works on the mind. You know, and then we have to pull down these captivities, these strongholds that He tries to place upon us. But you know, you and I can overcome all that. I want us to understand tonight, you know, that you and I are here to reveal the mystery. Not not to conceal this thing, but to let people know that Christ is alive. You know, to be this testimony that the pastor talked about. You know, to let people know and to, be, to have a testimony would be to give an account of something that exists. You know, to give an accurate assessment that something is. You know, if I were to go to a jury stand and they were to ask me something, 
something when I testify, that is to be to give an accurate account to say that something is, was, or exists. You know, when when I tell people I'm a Christian, you know, do they know that Jeremy Ballard is a Christian? I heard a, a good brother in the Lord say one time he he was giving a story about the, the missionaries that was working in India and stuff and and one of the and one of the men walked up and asked a, a Christian man, and a lady was sitting there. And he says, "What do you all put on your face to make it so bright?" He says, "You you obviously wear some type of moisturizer or makeup or something like that." And they will say, "No, sir, we don't wear nothing." You know, and that's what our life is to be today. You know, when people look upon us, you know, is it going to be just as they'd seen Moses when he seen the glory of God that that reflection, that brightness showed upon his face that they come asking you questions. You know, what what is it different about you? You know what. What is this about you that this life that makes you different? You know, because you, you and I are to stand out. You know, people ought to know that Christ lives in me, not to conceal Him, but to be revealed through our lives. And and and, that, and I know the, the 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 light of the Holy Ghost can shine upon people. I, I've seen that. And I, I know we and, and, and you and I in this room today can have a countenance about us, one that's lively and you know hope. And even through all the the tr- struggles and trials and stuff, I heard Pastor Jerry Rose say one time the Lord spoke to him. He was going through a great battle, and the Lord told him, He says, just go to church and act like nothing's wrong. You know, sometimes we just have to stand up. We know the battle's great, we know things are going on, but still we just have to stand up and embrace this and to reveal the Christ to this lost and dying world. You see, and God, but God made this plan. You know, before the foundations of the world. You know, we look back and we know that they embraced it in the Old Testament, but you know, here today it's revealed in you and I, and God has always desired to commune with man. God wanted to do that. He wanted to share his life. And you know, that's why God told Adam, He says, Adam, He says, you know, you can go and eat of this tree of life. You can have this. You know, what was that life? That was God's life. He was wanting to share things with Adam. He was wanting to grow him, commune with him, talk with him. But you know, here come the the, the here come this serpent, you know, and just begin to subdue and, be, and with through subdility, you know, deceive the woman. Then from that, the man and all that that was entailed and stuff there, you know, they begin to make their own value system. But God always wanted a life, you know, that He can share with. And, and that is you and I today. That is Christ in you and I. You know, this hope of glory. He wants to share this life and He, but, and he wants to put this life in. It's not that you and I can have a divided tent, but He wants to come and dwell us so that you, so that He can have a testimony on this earth. In Ephesians chapter 1, I hope I'm making sense to you tonight. I want us to understand that we're, we are to unravel the mystery. That, that's what you and I are here for, is to unravel this thing. Let people know that Christ is alive. You know, I, I, and, and, that's, and, that, and that's just what we're here for, is to let people know, you know that there is a Christ alive. And having made known unto us the mystery of His will. This is Ephesians 1 verse 9. According uh, to His good pleasure which He hath purposed in Himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, and that what that word dispensation is, see that, that, in, that in the dispensation, what he was saying is there's a new level of stewardship coming up. I'm, I'm, you know, we're served, you know, from times past we served in divers' washings and carnal ordinances. But when you see that word dispensation, it's beginning to allude to a new level of stewardship. That is accountability. That is something that you and I have to do or live up to. And it says that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, He might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in Him. You know, so have. You know, have I embraced, you know, that will in my life? You know, and that's that, that. You know, you know, have I? You know, it, it is one thing. You know, for you and I in this room tonight, we could all say that I desire for Christ to live in me. We we all say that, and uh, maybe I don't know if it's, we all say that. You know, but but that should be the desire of the Christian's heart to say, you know, I desire for Christ to live in me. I desire this. I want this. I want that. But it's altogether another thing to let him. You know, that, that there's a difference. You know, you, you can first have a desire, you know, we can want a lot of things, but do I have a desire, you know, to do that? I mean I, I can desire to lose thirty pounds, but am I committed to lose the thirty pounds? You know, we can have desires for a lot of things, but can I take that next step and actually let you know the, the Holy Ghost in my life, you know, re- let you know, reveal the Christ to me. See the the, the, the Holy Spirit 
What it done for Christ is it led Him through His life. It led Him even to a place of Golgotha. It led Him to the cross. It led Him to a place of death. In, in, in the cross in our life, wherever the Holy Ghost leads us will mark an end to something in our life that the Holy Ghost wants to deal with. You know, whether it's greed or lust or whatever it is, the, the Holy Spirit will lead you and I there. That's, that's sanctification. It brings us to this place, this cross, so it can be crucified. But then after that happens, it also marks a beginning. See, if you read in the Bible of St. John, we'll go over this tomorrow Sunday school, it says in the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden. See, He, he died in a place, but even in that place of His death, there was a garden which indicates a new life. See, so when, we, when the Holy Ghost brings you and I to a place of leading us and guiding us uh, to whatever He wants to deal with in our life, and he, he works on me every day, and He ought to work on you every day. We, we should let Him. What He's trying to do is bring something to death in our life to just to burn it up, to consume it. But on the other side of that cross, the same place where Christ had died, there was also a guard. See, He wants to start something new in our life when He brings us to this place. Of death. So, with that being said, you know, I not only want to desire this Christ, but I must let Him live His life through me. I must let Him. We can desire it, but I have to let Him. You know, I must walk in the Spirit that I shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. So, am I revealing? You know, Christ dealt with us in St. Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. You know, am I concealing or am I revealing? You know, the mystery. Here, here he says, let, you know, ye are the light of the world. You know, he says, you know, let your light shine. You know, and that's what he's telling everyone in this room tonight. It's so easy sometimes to get on the workplace. I don't know why it is, but it seems like it is. You know, they can uh, come in on Monday mornings and uh, uh, you know tell their 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 uh, extraordinary events over the weekend and uh, and just tell everything they drank and everything they done. You know, but yet sometimes the Christian just won't stand on two feet and tell them what Christ done for them. You know, and and that's. And that's just a, that's just a, a reproach. That's just a battle you and I have to fight and face sometimes. And sometimes there's a, they, they, they hated Christ before they hated you and I. And people don't like for their sins to be revealed to them. But sometimes we just have to stand there and say, hey, you know, the Lord delivered me of that and He wants to deliver you. And sometimes it's hard to do that. Sometimes we get laughed at. Sometimes, you, sometimes though, it actually works too, though. I mean, I've, I've been on both ends of that. I've sat and talked to people at work. I left them bawling and crying, you know, and the, and the conviction of the Holy Ghost was on their life. Then also I've sat there and just, uh, and they, they just blowed me off, spouted off a few words and they left, you know, and that's just, but, 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 but we got some of them, you know, and that's just what you and I are to be here today. You know, the city that's set on this hill cannot be hid. You know, we, we have received this light, you know, of Christ, you know, so let's let it shine. Let's let it be revealed through you and I. And I want to turn to Colossians chapter 2 verses 20 through 22. And it says, and this is a little bit about concealing Christ. Or, or I, want to, I want to bring something into that uh, with that thought. And it says, Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances? And what Paul was dealing with here was the ceremonialism of the Jews. He was dealing with that. And he was trying to get people to kind of get away from that. But in our life, you know, I say that I'm dead with Christ. I say that I'm free from the rudiments of the world. But why do I let so many things affect me? And some things do affect us. I'm not naive concerning that. But yet, I can say that I have this higher life. I have this higher form of life. But you know, why sometimes do I let the devil get me so down? Why do I let myself be subject, you know, to ordinances, subject to things that don't really matter, you know? But yet, the Lord is let me. Uh, he's trying to set me free. He's trying to grow me. But yet, sometimes we let ourselves be subject to do too many things. And the Bible says, "Touch not, taste not, handle not," which all are to perish with the using after the commandments and the doctrines of men. 
You know, and I want to tie this in with Colossians 3, uh, verses 1 through 7. I want to read through this, then I'll probably stop. And if ye be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. And set your affections on things above, not on, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with Him in glory. Mortify therefore the members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection. And what all that's saying is that you, you have an affection for things or a lust for things that you know that's forbidden. You, you desire things that you know you ought not to have. You, you, you desire to say something that you know you ought not to say or look at something you know you ought not to look at. Inordinate affection is what brings that. You're desiring something that you know is forbidden, but you, you, you kind of want to do it anyway. Uh, and, that's, and that's just what that is. And it says evil conceptions and covetousness which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. And I want to take something jumped out in verse 7. I want to read real slow and maybe explain it. And it says, In the which ye also walked sometime when ye lived in them. And see, if you notice that, it says when ye walked in them, that's when you lived in them, and, and, and or when you and see when I see that, and that when I'm still subject to ordinances, when I'm still subject to the rudiments of the world, and what he was talking about here, you know, the fornication, the uncleanliness, the inordinate affection. See if those things still have a, a hold on my life, that means that I'm still walking in them. I'm still living in them, and because it still has a hold on me. It, uh, that's different than. Uh, what we heard the other night, you know, sometimes the Lord comes to you and I, and, and we may not know there's a root of bitterness in us until someone comes and kicks her dog or something like that. You know, that stuff happens, you get a little mad. But sometimes, when you look at this right here, when He begins to deal with the inordinate affection, that means, like I said, you're doing things that you know is unlawful, things that you know is not right, but yet you do that anyway. And see, then verse 7 begins to be tied in. It says, "...in the which ye also walk sometimes when ye lived in them." See, if I have an inordinate affection of covetousness or uh, idolatry or fornication, if that's still a part of my life, that's because I'm still walking in that. I'm not free from the rudiments of the world. And by doing that, and whatever that I was wanting to bring it out, you know, I, I, I conceal Christ. See, God, Paul here was talking to the church when he was dealing with this. And that's, that's why I have to always remember that this is a book to the church. And all the things that Paul had to deal with in the church, he was telling this to a congregation of people. And so I want to always be mindful if I have a hard time with something, you know, if I have a hard time with fornication or things that are of uh, 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 uncleanliness or if I have a hard time with covetousness or whatever that is, and if I still continue, continue, and continue, why, the reason why I do that is because I'm still walking in that. I'm not free from that rudiment of the world that that chapter 2 was telling you and I about. So I want to just to deal a little bit uh, with the power of the witness. I wrote this down. Pastor Harris already talked about it. But you know, we, we've, we've read it and read it and read it. And you know, it talks about, I think it's in Acts chapter 1, uh, verse 8. I just want to read it one more time that you about being this witness. See, we're still talking about concealing or revealing Christ. And it says, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. See, what are you and I testifying to? You know, God has put you and I here, the born again people, to, to reveal this mystery, to reveal the Christ. But what is my testimony saying? Do, do I testify of the grace of God? You know, God has showed grace upon me by saving me. But yet, do I extend grace to people? You know, long suffering, being forbearing. We we heard the word the, dealt with the, uh, so wonderfully Monday night about being forbearing. The word forbearance, 
You know, do I show people the, the grace of God? You know, as much as I can that He showed me. You know, do I testify of mercy? You know, am I revealing the mystery of Christ? See, by His mercy He saved me. It wasn't according to my works. You know, because if it was works, I'd have somewhat to boast. I'd have something to brag about. But I come to Him, and I come to Him just as I was, and it was by His mercy He saved me. It wasn't, it wasn't Jeremy just brought Himself. But His mercy is what saved me. So with that being said, you know, I may be saved for 15, 20 years. I may say that I have, uh, you know, whatever gift of God I say I possess or profess, but do I still show mercy upon the young children that's coming into the house of God? Do I still extend that mercy that God extended to me? You know, what am I testifying to? You know, the testimony of love. You know, do I have a testimony to love what God loves? Do I see the sinner man come into the building? Do, 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 do I look at them with a heart and just totally bypassing the way they look on the outside and see that little heart that God looks at and says, that person right there needs salvation? You know, do I have a love of God in my heart, the testimony that, you know, if the love of God dwells in me, do I open up my bowels of compassion when I see my brother in need? Or does that little word covetousness come to me that Colossians chapter 3 uh, dealt with, you know, if I be risen with Christ. You know, if I be risen with Christ, you know that, that that's part of my testimony is I'm going to have love, you know, to let people know that I love them, however the Bible and however the Lord leads you and I to love them. And do I have a testimony, you know, of long suffering? You know, he is long suffering to usward. You know, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And that's talking to the ones that are born again, ones that are baptized in the Holy Ghost. That's talking to the ones, you know, that are lost and undone without God. He's, he, he's not willing that I perish. He, he wants me to come to Him, but just like when the Spirit of God reveals something to me that He wants to love me and grow me in, try to help me to do something a little bit better, you know, He's long-suffering to me. God loves me. And do I love people enough to be that same long-suffering to them? So are you and I tonight, are we concealing Christ or are you and I revealing Christ? That, that's the end of my message. Uh, like I said, I could have spent a lot of time on the. Uh, uh, not, I mean, there's a lot more time to spend on this. Uh, uh, and, and, but but I'm, I'm glad the Lord talked to me Thursday morning about this. I didn't know Dad was going to call uh, you know, on a Friday evening and, and talk about this but, or, you know, or, or ask, you know, ask for me to say something. But I'm glad the Lord already dealt with me about it a little bit and stuff. And I, I praise Him for His grace and for His mercy. And I, I just want you and I to know that you and I are here to reveal this mystery. And let me revert Colossians 1 verse 27 again in closing. It says, To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So, so may we reveal tonight. So I think uh, you want to make an altar call, Pastor? We uh, we got Pastor 1 and Pastor 2 here. I just say Pastor. Uh, so tonight we want to make an altar call. That, and just uh, wherever you are, wherever you are in life, uh, I mean, if you've been saved for 50 years, if you've never known what this experience of salvation is, it can all be found right here at this altar. You know, and 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 maybe we never come to a place where we never stop coming to the altar. You know, just keep on coming back, keep on coming back, because God, He loves us. And He wants you and I to just to visit Him. So I, I, we want to make a, a song of invitation. I don't know if the, our, our, our Smith sisters would have a, just some good songs of invitation. I know they do. Just wonderfully anointed people. So as they sing their songs, just come and visit this altar. Begin to talk to God. Because any time in the Old Testament they built the altar, it got them the same results. It got them in touch with God. And it do the same for you and I tonight. So praise the Lord. I'm grateful. Get around here and pray a while. I just feel away somewhere.
Sang, stand up, shake somebody's hand. Tell them you're glad you're here. Tell them you love them. Shake their hand. What took away your sins, folks? Amen. God's worth a little praise tonight. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, folks. Yeah, make them feel it.